Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and despite what people are saying, interest rates really aren't plunging too, too much. However, interest rates are going down. And as we all know, this housing market is drastically governed by interest rates right now. So we're really gonna dig into interest rates today and we're gonna take a look at a Redfin article just to see what the week over week data is saying as far as all of the trends in the housing market. But real quick guys, I really wanna point out that what we need to do to watch what's happening with residential mortgage rates is watch the 10 year treasury. And as you guys can see now, as of me making this video, the treasury is actually down a whopping 16 basis points. But I also want to remind you, when the treasury shoots down, that doesn't mean we're going to get all of that back on mortgage interest rates. And the reason is, is lenders hold on to that position. So even though we've had drastic declines in the 10 year, interest rates are still high. As we can see here by looking at Mortgage News Daily, the interest rates are still all the way up to 6.69%. Now, obviously, this was updated yesterday, the 16th. Now, I believe we're going to go into the weekend with interest rates at about 6.5%. So when you're done looking at this video, go back to Mortgage News Daily and see if we're going to go into the weekend with an average interest rate of around 6.5%. Now, before I really jump into the Redfin article, remember this, last year we peaked in June, okay? During the hottest season in history, basically, in the housing market, we peaked in June. And in June, house prices started going down at the fastest pace in history after June. So I wanna remind you, in June, the average interest rate was 5.78%. So even if rates go slightly under 6%, it's still gonna be higher than what we needed to totally destroy equity growth as proven. And you guys can go back and look at this yourself. June, 2022. June, 2022, we had 5.78. That's a fact. Now, either way, guys, we're gonna jump into an article from Redfin, but before I do, please like this video real quick, subscribe if you haven't already, shoot me a comment below and understand this. I really appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all you do for our channel and thank you for helping me build this great community now. So let's read a little bit about what Redfin has to say. Whether more buyers return to the market depends largely on how the Fed reacts. So how the Fed reacts and that's what everyone is waiting for uh, on the 22nd. All right, of this month, the Fed is gonna tell us how much, if any, they're gonna raise interest rates, the federal funds rate, that is. And I believe they're gonna raise it 25 basis points. Right now, it's about 50-50, 25 basis points or zero. So I think it's gonna be 25, but we're gonna see how they react. So reacts to unrest in the banking industry alongside persistent inflation. If the Fed presses pause on interest rate hikes next week and announces just a small increase, mortgage rates will drop. In fact, they're already dropping. But again, they're already still much higher than last year. Here's what we're seeing. We saw a lot of what I call like well-positioned buyer get weak and kind of buckle at their knees because they've been sidelined for so long. They thought it was time to buy, but listen to what this says. Sideline buyers reacted quickly. Bay Equity, Redfin's mortgage lending company. Redfin also has a mortgage company. So they kind of want to eliminate loan officers and realtors that they can't control. I mean, this is crazy. What I mean, they're just trying to monopolize the, uh, the real estate industry. Pretty crazy. Uh, but anyways, this is what it says. Overall, U.S. mortgage purchase applications increased 7% from the week early. Despite what we're hearing in the media, everyone's rushing out. But overall, home buying demand remains tepid, especially compared to where we were the same time last year. So I'm telling you guys, right now, people are freaking out for no, well, other than the bank and their money being safe, people really are freaking out for almost no reason right now. Uh, it's really kind of shocking how quickly that happens, but I get it because I'm also freaking out because I'm trying to buy a house as well. But let's take a look at the leading indicators this week. And this is week over week leading indicators. Uh, it's really cool to watch, you know, what happens for the trends. But for the week ending March 6, the average mortgage rate dropped to 6.6%. So we just access mortgage news daily and it's at 6.69%. Is that crazy? So even though the 10 years lower than it was when they wrote this article, interest rates are higher. Think about why that is, you guys. I'm 
telling you these lenders aren't going to give it to you. They're going to take those profits. All right. And actually, that's what we're saying. So anyways, 6.6, .6, although the daily average was 6.54. And I'm telling you guys, probably this is where we're going to end this weekend. We're probably going to go into the weekend at 6.5 or 6. Point, something around that lines. But remember, we can go down as low as 5.78 and the whole housing market implodes. Remember that. That happened last year. Let's go on. Mortgage purchase applications during the week ending March 10th increased 7% from a week earlier, seasonally adjusted. So purchase applications are still down 38% year over year. Massive hit. Massive, massive, massive hit. That's not good, obviously. Uh, if you're in the industry like I am, the seasonally adjusted Redfin home buying demand index measure of requests for home tours and other home buying services from Redfin agents was essentially flat from a week earlier and down 30%. So demand is down 30%, even with the low interest rates. Oh my gosh. Demand still down 30%. And inventory is like double where we were last year, this time last year. Interest rates are higher. Come on, guys. You with me here? Stay, be careful for all that emotion. Be careful that fear of missing out. Don't let it affect you. Anyways, moving on. Google searches home for sale were up 40%. What? Look at that, up 40%, although they're down 14% from a year earlier. So people are looking online at least, right? Now, touring activity, as you can see here, touring activity as of March 11th was up 19% from the start of the year with a 22% increase from this time last year, according to home tour technology company showing a time. So let's look at the year over year price decline. This is one of my favorites because it is getting worse and worse and worse. Now, I just want to show you guys right now on average, we are down on a national average. We're down 1.8% from a year earlier. Okay, we are down on average, down year over year, national average 1.8%, but that's year over year. If you bought at the peak in June, remember, you also lost all of the money that homes went up the, the first half of 2022. So you lost a lot more than 1.8%. And also remember this, it cost about 8% to sell. So do you want to go run back in and just jump in and buy a, a, a toxic asset? It is what it is. But again, you're going to want to hunt for a great deal always. Now, median sales price fell in, I think this is 48% of the top U.S. metro areas around the nation. So the housing market is crashing. It's just unfortunately not in every metro area. Now, the biggest metro area, this is insane, San Jose down 17.2% year over year. And that doesn't include the peak. They're down over 20% from peak. Y'all hear me on this? Austin followed by Austin at 13%. Austin down almost, almost, almost 20% as well from peak. Absolutely crazy. San Francisco down 11%. Insane. Oakland down 10. SAC down 8.6. And with the, you know, Silicon Valley collapse, those areas, you guys, you know, Northern California, tech heavy sectors are probably going to get hit even worse. Pretty crazy. One of my favorite data sets, this is the median sales price. You guys can see we are down year over year, 1.8%. You guys know I called that. I said at the end of February, it's going to happen. Now, obviously, the now here's the line right here. So the orange line is where we're at, okay? Now, this is what's going to happen. Now, again, I believe it's going to kind of be a steady, maybe more balanced incline, incline like this, and eventually it's just going to go straight down. But as we get into this time right here, okay, this is June and July. The gap between... 2023 and 2022 is going to get huge. We're probably going to have, I would say, on a national average, double digit, maybe 13% year over year decline. 13% is what I think. So it's probably what we're going to see as we go into the months. But again, going back here, here's what I think is going to happen. I think we'll have some slow increases in prices, like I said, and as we get closer and closer to the summer season, I think it's going to drop and I think it's going to drop fairly, you know, nicely. I'm hoping that we get under that blue line, which is 2021. I don't know you guys, that's what I'm hoping. It just depends really on the interest rates and it depends really on the government as far as how steep will that go, right? Is it going to be just balanced for 10 years, a small decline for 10 years, or are we going to have a sharp decline and then recovery? No one knows that yet. Okay, here's median asking price. So median asking price is keeping pace with last year. It's just people, you know, because look, 
Right now, the orange line is above this red line. So that means that people are trying to get last year's prices and they're not, okay? Because we're down significantly from median sales price. And what this is showing us is, no, well, predominantly no more bidding wars, right? One of the reasons why we had such a run up last year, the bidding wars going over appraisal value. So we're starting to see that stop Thank goodness, right? And, and we want it to stop because we're heading into the biggest buy, you know, really hot buying season. Now look at this, this is home, this is home buying housing payments. And this is why I'm telling people it's still a toxic asset. I know the banking collapse, where do we put our money? But if you buy real estate, you're gonna be buying real estate. Look, look at how much unaffordable it is compared to 2020. This is 2020. Mortgage payments were way down here in 2020, three years ago. Three years ago, you guys, the mortgage payments were about $1,500 in three years. Mortgage payments went up $1,000. A month, a mo not a year, it went up $1,000 a month. So again, you guys can go and buy a house if you want, that's fine. I'm gonna sit tight myself. Now here's what I've been waiting for. We've all been waiting for this. Uh, we're heading into we're heading into inventory dump month. So between now and probably around the end of July, this inventory and new listings is actually going to keep going up. So that's what I'm saying. If you guys are freaking out about when to buy, like buy after inventory dumps, buy after recessions confirmed, buy after the Fed pivots, right, and then buy. You know what I mean? Like no one has a crystal ball. I'm just saying, wait for those things first, wait for those things first. But that's the trajectory that I see as far as new listings and the new listings did go up week over week. Now here's something that is super duper duper important. This is the months of supply available on the market. Now here's what we're seeing. We have seen a month over month decline. I'm sorry, we've seen a week over week decline of months of supply available on the market. Since around February, so since around February, we started losing months of supply available uh, rapidly. So I just wanted to point out that we're still above, okay, we're still above where we started in 2021 and in 2022. So we have still made a considerable amount of progress, but we don't want to see that trajectory. We want to see this trajectory start going like this. And that's what I think is going to happen. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen, but we definitely want to keep our eye on inventory because the name of the game right now, y'all, is inventory and we need more of it. Right, this is a good indicator here. So only 24% of homes sold above their final list price. So this is more, you know, where we want to see it. Obviously in 2021, it was, you know, probably about 35%. And in 2022, it was about 47%. So we're seeing that, you know, that pandemony, that fear of missing out, although still in the market, we're seeing it settle down. So there's still going to be that initial shock of buyers that come in and buy overpriced houses, but we're seeing it drastically change from the last two years. That's a fact. There's something that I really like watching as well. Now, listings with price drops did increase. Now, you guys remember me saying we want this to increase. This is really going to show us what's happening with the interest rates and what's happening with consumers, but this is going back up. So week over week from here to here, it did go up slightly. We want this to continue to go up, right? We obviously want that to continue to go up, but look at where we were at the last three years. We were way, way down here the last three years, probably with about less than 3%, so about 2.8% of listings. So we have over double the amount of listings that are actually giving price cuts to, you know, to entice buyers. So again, I'm telling you guys, the market has changed significantly and we're only in the second inning. All right, so here's a really, really good one as well. Here's the Redfin Home Buying Demand Index. We're down 30% year over year, okay? So we have like record building, we have all this stuff going on, and yet we are down 30% year over year. How is the values gonna sustain and match 2022? It's not. There's so many people that are priced out. I mean, it's crazy. And look at this, okay? Despite the lowering interest rates this entire year, again, despite the lowering of interest rates, demand has basically stayed flat, okay? So as more and more black swans come into our market, we're gonna see this go down. We're gonna see this plummet. 
And the reason we're going to see that plummet is, is people are more worried about surviving, having food on their table than they are about purchasing an overpriced house. But those are just my opinions. Remember that you guys, I know there's different reasons to buy. There are some people that can still find great deals, but for the most part, most of us, we need to wait because I'm looking every single day. And again, at least I finally found a house that I love. Okay. So at least there's now enough inventory because remember this time last year, there ain't no inventory. We had to buy an overpriced piece of junk. So step one, I found a house that I love. All right, now step two, I need to buy that house with a deal that I love. And unfortunately I have found the house that I love, but not at the deal that I love. I want both of those things before I start purchasing again. You guys know how transparent I'm being about my own purchasing journey. I have converted my primary residence at a 2.15% to a rental property. I lost my tenant, but it's on the market. I'm trying to get my tenant back. I've decided to, instead of purchase, rent myself. And you can see this in the background. This is a rental house. It's driving me crazy. We downsized my entire family, downsized into this rental, and I do not like it. I don't like this rental. I'm frustrated. I'm upset. How are these rich people getting bailed out? Can't we just have our crash so we can get on with life? Right? You guys feel me on that? But either way, guys, you can count on me to be transparent and honest. And I'm going to continue to report what I'm seeing with my eyes. And other than that, guys, if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck and I hope you win.